Hey guys, up early for work today on Friday, then I get a two-day weekend, and I'll have my first few days under my belt, and then next week I'll have a full week, and so I can't wait for that, and hopefully I'm hoping that this week I can kind of get in some kind of routine of studying and working on teaching, so hopefully like Saturday or Sundays I can make some good videos, but... I want to go over something just a little bit here I'm looking into, because somebody sent me an email about these recent videos I've been doing about the resurrection and saying that, you know, the rapture isn't true and and probably, you know, the millennial kingdom is not true and I don't know about Daniel's 70th week and all that. It's probably uh, very wrongly understood uh, or or some events that may have already happened. But somebody sent me a... Uh, email and they still want to hold on to the idea of the rapture and they told me about revelation 310 and they say that this tries that this proves the rapture and i used to teach that that it proves the rapture because uh, i came across other people saying that and i thought it, that it worked but it doesn't prove the rapture and that's why i went directly after the main verses that are used to teach the rapture in corinthians and thessalonians and i went through and i showed that if you understand them in context paul is speaking of the resurrection which jesus spoke of over and over again it's all about the resurrection okay christ raised and so we will be raised like him okay and that happens after the body dies so oh, that's we see that over and over and over and over and over again that is the promise of eternal life. That is when we really inherit the kingdom. Uh, you know, or that's you know when we enter into the kingdom. Okay. So I got on Bible Hub and I look here first a lot of times just to see other people's interpretations and stuff. And I figured you know there's probably some other interpretations of Revelation 3:10. You know, before I wanted to believe that it was the rapture and stuff, but now I see that's not true. So I'm trying to understand it in a different way. And here's somebody, I don't know who it is, it doesn't really matter, but uh, he wrote a long commentary on this, McLaren. But I'm just getting down here and he says, I mean, I can go over Revelation 3.10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So I used to think that the hour of temptation was Daniel's 70th week. And to be kept from the hour means that he was going to rapture people. But now I see that that's not what that means. And... Uh, here this McLaren guy says, so as the hour of temptation shall be, uh, shall not be the hour of falling. Okay. It shall not be the hour of falling. So, and that makes me think of um, a verse, where I think Paul, let me see the New Testament, says, you know, the, the Lord who is able to keep you from falling. Oh. Uh, why can't I find that? Maybe if I just look up keep and we'll see. Because there's some other things too. When Paul says that he, or Jesus says that he'll keep, uh, you know, basically keep his sheep. Let's see. Keep through thine own name, whose name thou hast given me, that they may be one. Keep them from evil. See, this could be a, a good verse here. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. And then what did he say in Revelation 3.10? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Okay, I'll keep you from from falling into the evil no of this time or of this world. And um Yeah, I don't remember when Paul says it, but I know he talks about keeping keeping you from uh falling. 
I'd really say this is a really good one, though you can almost see it. And that's what I look for. When I can see verses that are pretty much talking about the, the same thing, they're just worded differently, that helps out so much. And that's what we see with these supposed rapture passages. We see the same things that are being spoken of about the resurrection. Um, let's see. You know, the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So, you know what, actually, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go to the Bible study page, and I'm going to add this to the supposed rapture passages, because I'm seeing this really good right now. This is being really helpful, so... Where is it? Okay, it's all right here. Here's the supposed rapture passages. I thought about separating them in different pages because I could make a lot of comments on each of them, but I'll keep them all here now. Okay. So I'm going to add Revelation 3.10 because I've, I've used that before to teach that. So Revelation 3.10, I'm going to make that bold. Now, um, let's see. Okay, now go back. I'm going to start adding these verses that are like this. And you can come here and check this out again. So we're going to put John 17:15. We're going to put... I don't know where, where was the other one at. It was a short one. Hmm. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, here's the one. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Jude. Jude 124. There's another one I missed. Okay. Have to go back through these again. Not an axe. Hmm. Here we go. The Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now I've got three verses that almost say the exact same thing as Revelation 3.10. So when he says, you know, keep you from temptation, that's what he's talking about, keeping you from, from falling into the temptation. Hmm, this could maybe be used to... Second Timothy chapter one verse fourteen, the good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Keep by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Hmm. Let me look up temptation. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And this is interesting too. In Luke 8.13, because he talks about those who... Receive the word with joy, but they have no root. 
believe for a while, and in the time of temptation, they fall away. But Jesus says, I will keep you from falling. Hmm. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Okay. Well, I think that these three verses are pretty good at understanding Revelation 3.10 better. It doesn't teach the rapture, and um, neither does Thessalonians or Corinthians. They're speaking of the resurrection. Uh, this is talking about the Lord keeping. Um, keeping people from falling into temptation, or in, in the hour of temptation. So, and it might not, it probably doesn't even have anything to do with Daniel's 70th week either. Or the abomination of desolation or any of that. Um, so that's that. And again, I mean, I'm more confident about this now than I ever was before. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to delete a bunch of my teachings before well, that's okay. I, all I can do is teach, you know, what I see is right now. And uh, so that's that. I also want to show something else I'll share in this video, I guess, while I'm at it. And that is... Um, let's see. Hermeneutics. Okay. Figures of speech. I was just looking at this. So I want to. I've been wanting to do a study on this for a while. I still got to kind of put it together, but it's uh, hyperbole, which is basically exaggeration. And I'm not sure about all these, but pretty sure I want to share this. So. You know, Matthew 24, verse 21, it says, Then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. So we think that this is some great event, some horrible stuff that's never happened before or never will happen again. And, uh, and we, and so, so that makes us think that this is yet to come. So that makes us think that this is t speaking of a future event. Um, and also we have in the book of Revelation, if it's this talking about the same thing, Daniel 70th week. Um, you know, it talks about the seals being open and what is it like a third of the population dying or something. So there's stuff that you know, we really haven't seen. At least we think that we have it. But if we just go by this verse alone, if we just go by this verse, um, I'm, I want to show you that we should maybe reconsider not getting caught up on this phrase, on this language that says that there will be tribulation um, like there never has been and, and there never will be. Because there are other verses that speak in the similar similar language with stuff that I believe already happened. Like this, in Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 9, And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. And I'm not sure off the top of my head what the stuff's speaking of, that's why I need to still finish this study and stuff, but I think that some of this he might be talking about judgment on Jerusalem and stuff that that's like already happened in the past. And so maybe that's kind of the same thing that he's saying in Matthew 24. Um, you know. So, I don't know. Um, uh, and this one might be kind of similar to Daniel 9.12, and he hath confirmed his words which spake against us and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done, 
as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So basically it's something that, you know, has never happened like this before. Um, when we see that things like that have kind of happened before in a way. So some skeptics and people will use these verses and they'll say that, see, there's a contradiction because he said, you know, this is an event that the judgment will be so severe it will be like it never was before and it will be like it will never be again. But then we'll see the same terms used later again. So we'll say, you know, so so they'll try to say that these verses are false or whatever. But the thing is that it's a figure of speech being used. It's exaggeration. Okay, there's, it's it's exaggeration in here. And so people were trying to take it literally. And it's not meant to be taken literally. And that's the thing. And we see some of the same things here, like uh, 2 Kings 23, 25, And like unto him there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to the law of Moses, neither after him rose there any like him. Okay, and there might be other kings that it will say the same thing like later on. It'll be like, wait a minute, I thought this previous king, it said that there was no other king like him, and then... You know, now it's saying that, uh, and later on, there might be another king where it says that there was none like him who loved the Lord before him. And it would be like, well, wait, what, what about this other one? You know, where it said that none was going to come after him and love the Lord like he did. You know, but it's exaggeration. It's hyperbole. That's why, because we're not supposed to be taking that literally. So... I think that we really need to reconsider the events in Matthew 24 and, you know, the abomination of desolation, Daniel 7th week, basically, and uh, this whole futurism thing. I'm not sure all about it. And, you know, I'm pretty sure about the Millennial Kingdom now, especially when I read last night that Jesus said the Kingdom of God is within you. He says it doesn't come with observation. Uh, so... I don't think that there is going to be a, a physical, literal kingdom on the earth. But then, you know, Daniel's seventh week and stuff is interesting. Um, I don't know. So, and, and what does that mean? Even if Daniel's seventh week already happened, or it's all symbolic of something else, you know, then what does happen to the future of the world? So that's an interesting study to find out, you know. I have to think really that it does get worse. I can't really see it getting better. Um, you know, that's there's two different views, you know, either like, I guess, I don't know, like the post-millennials, they would say that Christianity pretty much, you know, takes over the earth. Everybody ends up getting saved. And then that's when Christ comes uh, and rules and reigns. But I don't think so. I think that the, the kingdom is spiritual. Um... I think the new heaven and new earth is probably, you know, right after death, when when we're with Christ. Um, but, I don't know. I don't know, does the earth just go until its own destruction? or <laughs> I don't know. But the important thing to, to know is that if you're saved, if you've believed and, and trusted in Christ and repented, and you're saved... When your body dies, you will be raised, just like Jesus was. You'll be with Jesus. You'll be crowned, you know, with glory and uh, immortality and uh, life. You'll have eternal life. You'll be with all the other saints who have passed before you. You know, heaven and earth is going to pass away, and you're going to, um, I would say, probably... I could say that you're going to enter the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, but, so think about these things, guys. Really consider this. I mean, I showed some different verses that pretty much say the exact same thing that Revelation 3.10 is saying. It doesn't teach the rapture. I already went straight after the main rapture verses. I showed that they're speaking of the resurrection, which is a spiritual resurrection. It happens when the body dies. And I'm showing you here in Matthew 24... When Jesus said that there will be tribulation like there never has been nor ever will be, we should tread that very carefully 
when there's similar language used other places in the Bible that's not speaking of the same event. Um, so apparently stuff has already happened that has been said that nothing worse than it will come later. And uh, so there's not contradictions, but it's exaggeration. It's a, you know, it's an extreme exaggeration. And basically what it would mean is just, this is very, very bad. Okay. That's just what it means. It's just a very bad, something really, really bad is going to happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be something worse later, but it's just be aware that this is very bad. Okay. So God bless guys.